Okay, I've been having requests for showing you how to create my um, uh, React Move application in Astro instead. So I actually created it in Astro, but this is not a full course. I'm just going to show you how I did this. And I think it's enough if you've done my course before where I create this uh, Move application with React and a lot of cool stuff like TypeScript uh, and uh, Next.js. I think this will be enough for you to, to have an idea on how you can refactor this one. So it works exactly the same. I still have the logo here, RMDB. It's for React Movie Database. So, but yeah, it's not actually React. It's in Astro, but that's fine. Uh, so if we search for something here, Indiana Jones. You can see that it, it shows the movies here and you can click on a movie and it will go to that movie. And if you see here also, I'm using that cool transition API with Astro. I don't know if this screen capture will show it but it's actually fading in the other pages here uh, as uh, you click on this movie. So it works exactly the same, but it's quite different actually because I didn't want to use libraries like React with Astro as you can do to do the interactive parts. I'm actually using uh, web components and um, vanilla JS. So we're going to have a look at that. So we go inside of the code editor and First, I have my Astro config. Nothing special here um, for this one. You can see the packages here. We have Astro. This one shouldn't be here, really. Tan stack React query. I removed this one. It was because I tried also to use React, but I didn't want to use that. It's much cooler to do it without any libraries. And it's actually a good practice also. When you've been working with React, you get very comfortable with stuff like keeping state and stuff like that and update things. And now... As I do it with vanilla JS, I realized that, okay, yeah, maybe I should do more vanilla JS stuff. But I've been working with React for a long time now. So, yeah, this was a good practice. So, let's see here. We have the components. Just as in the other course, I had a breadcrumb, header, hero, the movie card, movie info, pill, search input, and spinner. So, these are the components that I converted over. What I've done here is in my latest iteration of the React course, I'm using Tailwind. I'm not doing that here. I'm also creating this with plain CSS as an Astro component like this. So everything is just vanilla. Everything is plain. No extra libraries for CSS either. This is the component, for example, for the breadcrumb. So you, I'm creating a component here, uh, just as it should in an Astro component. And then I have the styles here at the bottom, just regular plain styles. And I will say also that this application, it, it's really not finished. There are a lot of stuff you can add and tweak it and add little details to it. But it works now, and that's the important thing, and that's what I wanted to show you. So every one of these are plain Astro components. So the only component that is different here is for the movie card. And this is actually a web component. And when you create a web component, you create it like a class like this with a constructor and everything like that. And this is the ugly part here that I haven't fixed yet. This is the component with the styles. You have to put the styles here also inside of the component. And I'm just pasting them in here in a template literal. Uh, so I'm going to fix this later to do it a little bit more sophisticated, so to say. But this will work. So what you do here is you create your component. And I have my inner HTML here. And I type in the HTML with the CSS here inside of a style tag. So this will create the component. And this web component is because I'm going to use vanilla JS to actually swap out components when you load the movies and search uh, for movies in the application. If we go back and check it here, you can see first I have a scroll here, the infinity scroll that fetches more. So the DOM is modified here with JS. So this is the web component that you see here. All these um, uh, little cards here are the web component. And also here, for the actors is the web component as well. So you can't really use an Astro component inside of your web component. I can't select an Astro component here and render that one out. So that's why I have to create it like this with a template literal right now where I put in my HTML and CSS because you can't use Astro components in your web component. Astro can use web components and uh, React components and other front-end uh, libraries and stuff like that but not the other way around. So if we look here, I have a layout. This is the one for both the pages where I just set some stuff here. I set up some meta tags and, and uh, stuff like that. I have my fav icon. 
uh, and the title. And then here also you can see that I actually have to import my web component and that's what I'm doing here. So from the components, I get the movie card web component. So I do that in the head. And then I add these view transitions that I import from Astro. So this is the only thing I do here to actually get them to work. Um, but I'm using the basic one that just fades in and out. So I haven't done any fancy stuff there. And then I have my global styles here, just as I should do it in, in uh, Astro. So that's the layout. Then I have two pages. One is the index and one is for each movie here. So if we start with the index, you can see here I have my components that I import. I also have my URLs here for the endpoint. Uh, in my config, you can see I've set up all these URLs and stuff here exactly the same way as I do it with my React application. So I haven't changed that anything. I just copy and paste uh, these files over to this application instead. You can see that I do a basic fetch and I return a type of movies. So I have this API folder with the fetch functions. And this is the only one that I use here. In my React application, I'm using TanStack query or React query, but I'm not doing that now. We're doing this plain JS or TypeScript as I'm using here also. So I have a basic fetch function that I created where you can send in your type for the return data. And I have the types here. I created these ones. So these are just copy and paste also from the other application. And if you haven't done that course, I have that course right here on my YouTube channel. And I can also link to it down below this video so you can check it out if you want. That is a full course where I build this application from scratch with React. So if we go back to the index, so I call that one with my popular base URL because we're fetching the most popular movies from the movie database. And you also need to have an API key. So you have to register for free at the movie database to get that API key. Uh, and I'm starting at page one. Uh, so we have those movies here. I loop over them here and I render them out. And you can see that I use my web component here. You don't need to import it or anything. It's just there because we've imported and set it up in the head, in the layout component. So that's fine. We can just use it all around the application now, like a regular component. So nothing fancy here going on, really. Uh, I have the styles here. You can also see up here that I import my JavaScript and I have that inside my scripts folder. And this is actually the most complicated part with this application, I think. When you're not using React, you have to do this yourself instead because now you're modifying the DOM and you need to use JavaScript to do that. So I set up this file here. It's roughly 80 rows. So this will take care of the infinity scroll and stuff like that on the home page. So if we just go through it here, you can see that first I have a time. This one is used for debouncing. We start on page one. I have my movies in a variable and also have a timer. That's because I have the set timeout in the timer. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go through that in a second. Uh, then I have the search input value, and that is for the search box on the, uh, on the home page. Then, as we're not using React now, we have to grab this. I don't know how you pronounce it, but uh, React is declarative. This is imperative, I think, uh, is the word. Uh, so I grab all those elements here and keep them in uh, different variables, different consts, because they are not changing. So that's why I'm using const. Then I have my fetch movies function. So you can see down below here also where I set up my event listeners. I have the scroll event listener on that scroll window, the main. And I have my input on my input box. So I set up uh, these event listeners here. And you can see that I call handle input and handle scroll. So if we start with handle input here, that is the one for the search box. I have the value. I start at page one. I have the movies here. So the first thing I do is to grab the value. And when you do a search, we are resetting everything. So we reset the page to one and we reset the movies. It's going to be an empty array. Then we clear out the timer that we set up here before because we don't want to do anything as long as the user types anything. You can see that I have the time here and that one is this 300 milliseconds. So we wait 300 milliseconds before we do anything. And if the user types anything, we just clear that one so we don't send a lot of requests to the API. So I call these fetch movies here. And I do the same here in the handle scroll. I check for the scroll top, client high, scroll height on the current target. That is a little, little comment here because you can make this a little bit more sophisticated. This is a very simple solution, but it won't work in every situation. 
So you can do this with a Resize Observer instead. But this one will work for now. Essentially, what it's saying here is when you scroll to the bottom, we call the fetch movies function again. So this is the same function that we call to fetch the movies. And it's inside of this function here that the magic is happening, so to say. So first, if we have a spinner, that's the one that I fetch up here. It can also be on, uh, null. So that's why I check if it's there because we're using TypeScript now, so it will complain otherwise. So I set the visibility to visible because now we're fetching stuff. So we show the spinner. And then I decide if we have a search value, I need to have this endpoint here. Otherwise, we're going to fetch the popular movies because we know if we have a search value, the user have typed in something to search for. Then I fetch the movie data from the basic fetch. And this is the one that we used initially on the page to fetch uh, the data. And then I add a page to the page uh, variable up here, because now we're fetching a new page. So that is for the infinite scroll to keep track on which page you're on. Then if everything went well here, you hide the loading spinner. And then if we have some movie data, we put them in the movies array. So we have the old movies here. So we just attach the new movies here by spreading these ones out. I also want to hide the hero image when you search something. So I set the display on that one to none or when I turn it back, when I show it again, I set it to block. I also change the header, because if you're on the popular movies, you're going to type out popular movies, otherwise type out search movies and uh, the total result. Then this is probably where everything is happening that's most important here, and that is to actually show the movies that we are loading. So we have the div here. Uh, you can see, yeah, I probably should have renamed this one before I did this video, because yeah. But I call it the div now. Uh, that's the movie grid that I'm grabbing. So this one should be named movie grid, actually. I think that's better, movie grid. Like that. Uh, and I set the inner HTML from the movies. I map through the movies. And I essentially use my movie card component here with a wrapper around it. The link is here so I can link them in to the individual movie page also. So that is what I'm doing here. This is plain JS to, to achieve that one that I did in the React movie with uh, React. You have roughly 80 rows of code and you have no library to, to also load. You have to load the React library to use React when you do that stuff. So this one should probably be faster and a lot less JavaScript in. Uh, and I think that's it for the homepage. I have, of course, this is basic stuff. I have the header, the hero. So I send in the data to those components. And in the individual movie page, we're not loading anything more, so we can do everything initially. So I have that function here, get movie data. And that data is actually from two different endpoints. So I kind of merge them together here in an object. I get the movie, the directors, and the cast. Uh, so I have that data initially in this one. I get it here, and then I can use it here in the component. So that is pretty cool. And that's everything there is to it. This is uh, the movie application done with Astro. Hope you enjoyed this one, and hopefully I see you in another one.